God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I'm Bishop Ramon Di Maria, and I am the pastor. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall all rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for everybody being here today, and thank you to all of you who are watching this video through uh, YouTube. And for those that are listening to the audio portion of this, on Spreaker.com. Our message series title is Understanding Salvation. Our main text will be from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 3 and verse 18, which reads as follows, firstly from the King James Version, He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now the Good News Bible renders it. Those who believe in the Son are not judged, but those who do not believe have already been judged, because they have not believed in God's only Son. My beloved, in Christianity, Union or friendship with God and deliverance from original sin and damnation is promised to Jesus, I mean it's promised by Jesus and his followers. And that means the followers, the apostles, all those that followed and all of us as Christians through the centuries thus far. Now, this salvation is free. You can't work for it, you can't purchase it, or anything else. It is a free gift to mankind, to all mankind. But unfortunately, all mankind will not accept this gift of eternal life. And this gift can only come through a relationship with God, through His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. So, what happens when you accept Christ as your Savior Lord, your sins are forgiven. And you are, in essence, in a, let's put it this way, in a relationship with God that He desired that all His creation have in the beginning. But because of the sin of Adam and Eve, we lost that connection with God. And that's why he sent a redeemer to redeem us back to himself. And we know that his word, the word of God became flesh. And we accept him and preach him as the only begotten son of God, whose name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, my beloved, let me say this, that when we deal with salvation, salvation is a noun. And what is it? I'm going to give you four instances. It's the act of saving or protecting from harm, risk, loss, and destruction. Now, any of you that study the Bible understand the word destruction. Destruction means to destroy. In this case, that if you refuse to accept Christ as your Savior and Lord, when you die, you go into total destruction. Nothing could ever be rebuilt in your life. Your relationship with God cannot be established once you die. You are, for eternity, on the losing end. Two, salvation is a source, cause, or means of being saved or protected from harm and risk. Three, salvation is the state of being saved or protected from harm and risk with an, let's say, an insurance policy, a guarantee, a warranty. 
that you will be with Christ in heaven forever. And point four, salvation is a theology, which means it is a study of the Word of God. It is deliverance from the power and penalty of sin. In other words, it is redemption, which means that you have been redeemed back to God through this vessel that is known to us in Christianity as Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is the door to the sheepfold. He is the gate that leads to eternal life. Mm -hmm. Only through Him can you have eternal life in heaven. Now, you will have eternal life. Your soul will live forever. But without Christ, you will not abode in heaven, but you will abode, abode in the pit of hell. Make no mistake about it. The Word of God is true. Through the centuries, people have tried to disprove it. They never could. Atheists, to this day, are trying to disprove the Word of God, but it's impossible. They never can. And no one will ever be able to disprove the Word of God. Now, let's open up with the book of Romans, chapter 3 and verse 23. And I'm going to read it from the God's Word version. It says, because all people have sinned, they have fallen short of God's glory. Mankind cannot possibly have a relationship with God because of sin. Sin is the ruin of all mankind. And as long as you are living in a state of sin, I don't care if you pray, I don't care what you do, you will never get to heaven. Because the only way to the Father is through the Son. And the Son is Jesus Christ. Now, we know for a fact that everyone is a sinner. Everyone is born with sin on their soul. We as humans cannot see anyone's heart. So we cannot judge people as to whether they are saved or not. All we can do is judge by their actions. We can, but we don't have a right to judge the person as to whether they're saved or not. But their actions tell the truth. Their actions do not lie. So... Jesus said, you shall know them by their fruit, or what they exhibit to those that are within distance, to those that are within a proximity, to those that are within sight of their human nature, and to those that listen to what is being said. Jesus said an ironic thing in that. The book of Mark, he said, see, they were asking him why his disciples don't wash their hands before they eat. Why don't they follow the traditions of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and everything else? Jesus said, you know, it's not what goes in to your body, but it's what comes out. So, if you're eating with dirty hands and there's germs on the food, it doesn't make any difference. But what comes out of you makes a difference. Because what comes out of you is what is in your heart. So he used that as a scenario. So my beloved, 
you will know where a person stands in a relationship with God through Christ by what they speak and by the actions that they manifest to you. So, knowing this, you might propose a question. And most likely that question is, what does it mean to be a sinner? In Luke chapter 19, in verse 10 it reads, The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. They, the Pharisees and Sadducees were continually throwing questions at Christ. They were watching him. They were, they, they had a magnifying glass on him all the time, examining his every move that he made, whether he healed on the Sabbath day, whether he multiplied the loaves and the fishes, whatever he did, they watched him, especially when it came to the Sabbath day, which was rest. And Jesus simply told him that, look, you keep on saying these things to me and trying to find things that I'm doing wrong, but you can't. Because I only do what my Father tells me to do. And that only will I do. So my beloved, you as being a Christian are under a, not only a, ma a magnifying glass, you're under a microscope. And people are watching your every move, so please, manifest good fruit. Let your light so shine in this lost and dying world. See, sinners are far away from God and cannot find their way to God. Therefore, we as Christians must present the gospel of our Savior Lord Jesus Christ to them. And the one way you can do that is bear good fruit. Be honest. Don't rob, steal, kill. See, all these things are the traits of Satan. Christ says, show love. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do good to those that despitefully use you. And say all bad things about you. As soon as Jesus called Levi or Matthew, Matthew gave a dinner. And wouldn't you know it, Pharisees were there and they proceeded to say to him why you eat with all these people why do you hang around these sinners he says look it's not the healthy that need a physician it's the sick when you are without Christ you're sick it's just like you're disease ridden with an, with an incurable disease, a cancer of some type. And only through salvation can it be destroyed. Sin. The minute you're born, it'll follow you to your death. And unless a change takes place, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. So, one of the most read scriptures or recited scriptures for salvation is John chapter 3 and verse 16, which reads as follows. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever shall believe in him should not perish but shall have ever 
everlasting life. My beloved, unless sinners believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, they will perish for all eternity, forever. You know, there's a problem in the world today. People try to measure eternity. They look at it as if it's something temporary. It's a temporal thing. When you're dead, you're dead for eternity. When you're in heaven, you're in heaven for eternity. If you refuse Christ as your Savior and you go to hell, you're in hell for eternity. There's no second chance. Yes, God is a God of second chances. Only when you're alive and breathing can you have a second chance and a third chance and a fourth chance. You see, the Holy Spirit continues to knock at the door of your heart. He's always knocking and knocking. Then that one day, he won't knock anymore. Then, you become what we call doomed or damned for all eternity when you die. Don't ever believe the lie that Satan tells you. That live your life now. Have a good time. Do whatever you want. Sin. You can repent when you're an old man. You know what I, I would like you to do? Just one day when you have free time, in the sun of the day with the coolness of the morning, walk in the cemetery. Take a notebook. Read the headstones. You'd be surprised at how many young people are buried there that may not have had the opportunity to repent and accept Christ as their Savior and Lord. Now, you're, you'll see the dates there, but I, I just want you to see the date because you won't know the state of their soul. But look at the dates of when they died. In my hometown, we had people dying 14, 15, 16, 18, 20 years old, 25. 30, 40, 50. There's more young people in the cemetery than there are old people. My beloved, you're not guaranteed retirement or to get on Social Security. Tomorrow isn't guaranteed to you. It's not guaranteed to any human being. It's not guaranteed to me, even a messenger of the Word of God. It's not guaranteed to me or any of our brothers and sisters here today. Long life isn't guaranteed. Many ministers, great evangelists, died young. Being a saint is no guarantee. Being a Christian is no guarantee that you're going to live to be 120, to be another Moses. Or how about Methuselah? Your life isn't guaranteed. Tomorrow, the next five minutes, God can take me home. If he does, I'm ready because Jesus Christ is my Savior and Lord. And I hope today that if he isn't now, that he does become your Savior and Lord. And you will be with Christ the moment you take your last breath. My beloved, so what does it mean to perish forever? This means to be lost and in the fires of a place called the lake of fire and brimstone, which we call hell. There's torment and there's hell. It is so very true that God is love. But also you must say, and... God is also just. He is the judge of all mankind. And the judge must always do what's right. Let me tell you something. Don't look at our courts today and the judges today that can be swayed by 
lawyers, or some technicality. No. You cannot sway the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to say, I know you, or I know you not. He's going to say, come on in, I know you, or depart from me. I never knew you. Which one would you want to hear when you die? For me, it's welcome in a good faithful servant. My beloved, your soul is nothing to play around with. Say, Jesus will judge all mankind, and the judge must always do what is right. Jesus cannot make a mistake. He cannot do wrong. He cannot be swayed by any fast talker or anything. You know, as they say in uh, Christianity a lot of times, that there won't be any lawyers in heaven. Well, I don't believe that. Because there are a lot of Christian lawyers out there, and they try to do what is right. But Paul writes, who won't be in heaven, liars, cheaters, fornicators, the sexually uh, immoral. He gives a whole list. My beloved, examine yourself today. See if you fit into any of them categories. If you do, you can change your life today. All you have to do is repent. Accept Christ as your Savior and Lord. See, God does not condemn people just because they, they are sinners, but because they are sinners who do not believe and Jesus Christ. God is able to forgive all sins except the sin of not accepting Christ as your Savior and Lord. That's the only sin won't be forgiven. Because God gave His most beloved thing, Jesus Christ, and you refused Him. You blasphemed. So I don't want him. I don't need him. I don't care about anything. The Holy Spirit was, like I say, tugging at your heart, tapping at the door of your heart. So I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't need it. Get away from me. I never need you. I will never need you. I'm okay. You're not okay. And one day, you will see how foolish you were to believe that you are okay. In hell there's no ice water, no iced tea with or without sugar or lemon. There's no coffee. There's no steaks. There's nothing. All there is is wailing and gnashing of teeth. Torment, torture, burning. And you never disintegrate. It's a continual process. And it will take place for all eternity. But hey, you won't be alone. You choose to be with the sinners of the world and be with them and have a good time. You'll be with them in eternity, forever. There won't be any party like some of these rock stars say. We're going to party in hell. Hooray. Everybody say hooray. They're fools. They don't know what they're talking about. The only truthful thing in this life is the Word of God. And those that refuse it will pay the price when they give this life for eternity. My beloved, unsaved people often perform good acts toward humanity. A lot of people give, they donate, they do good things. But that won't get them to heaven. You can't get to heaven by good works. They give their money to help the poor, feed and clothe the needy. And they, a lot of them even spend a lot of their time working for the good of man. These things 
seem to be good to us, but to God, He doesn't see them as good. My beloved, John chapter 3 and verse 19 says from the Good News Bible, This is how the judgment works. The light has come into the world, but people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds are evil. What kind of deeds are you exhibiting today? Can you be honest with yourself? Can you just read just this Gospel of John through and be truthful with yourself? Or the third chapter of the book of Romans and be truthful with yourself? Can you examine yourself, go through the process of self-examination and see where you line up with the Word of God? You'll be amazed at where you stand in the eyes of God and where you will stand in the judgment if you do not repent. Romans chapter 8 and verse 8 reads from the God's Word version, those who are under the control of the corrupt nature can't please God. So, if you continue your, your life like you came into this world and you are controlled by the power of darkness, you will never get to heaven. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 4 says, in the King James Version, a high look and a proud heart and a plowing of the wicked is sin. Plowing is not bad in itself any more than going to school or washing dishes or running errands, but it is sin when it is done by one who is rejecting Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. John chapter 3 and verse 36 reads, and this is where we will close for today, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever disobeys the Son will not have life, but will remain under God's punishment. If you fail to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, you are classified as a sinner or an unbeliever. And all unbelievers are under the wrath of God. So, I, beloved, where do you stand today? Are you saying, like, yes, I go to church, I take communion, I uh, work for the church, I run errands for the church, I give in the offering? That won't get you to heaven. It's only through a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. This relationship enables you to go to heaven when you leave this life. Or should the rapture take place? You immediately go to heaven. Or if the rapture takes place and you are in your grave, you will go up. That is the only way that you will make it to heaven. It's a serious thing. Your soul is so very important to God that He wants you to repent and accept His plan of salvation. Will you do that today? Will you put your life in the hands of Jesus Christ? Will you accept him by faith, believing that he is the Messiah, that he came into this life, was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven, is now sitting at the right hand of God the Father? 
Will you do that today? If you will, and mean it from your heart, you will have eternal life. Repentance is turning away from your present lifestyle. If you want to repent today, I want to lead you in a prayer. But you must believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. I can't do it for you. I can lead you in the right direction. If you'd like to do that today, won't you pray this prayer with me? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come to you a sinner. I heard the message today, and I believe the message today. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that he was crucified, died, was buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven, is now sitting at your right hand in a place of power and majesty. From where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. I believe this today. Your word says that if I believe this, being a sinner, I will become a believer, a Christian, and I will go to heaven when I leave this life. But to not to do it, I'll be classified as an unbeliever and will go to hell instead of heaven when I die. I repent of my sins. I'm sorry for my sins. And I accept Jesus Christ as my only means of salvation, as my only means of getting to heaven. I believe that through my repentance, confession, and profession of faith in Jesus Christ, that I have become a Christian, and when I die, I will go to heaven. And I thank you for my salvation today. In Jesus' name I pray. My beloved, if you said that prayer today, then you'd be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. And what I want you to do is ASAP go to a Bible preaching, teaching church, get an audience with a pastor, one of his staff, one of his elders, tell him what happened, ask him to anoint you with oil, to pray with you, to pray for you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ask them to mentor you, to give you a Bible if you haven't any, and to lead you and guide you in your newfound faith in Jesus Christ. And to answer any questions that you may have, because you're going to have plenty. And then what I want you to do is ask the preacher to baptize you by full immersion in water, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then what I would like you to do is contact me at abundant.grace at att.net and just earmark it, Pastor. You can also contact me through our website at www.abundantgracechurch.net or www.abundantgraceofmidlothian.com. Midlothian is spelled M-I-D-L-O-T-H-I-A. Or you can just Google me, Bishop Ramon Di Maria, or Abundant Grace Church of Midlothian. Please, I'd like to hear from you. Thank you for being with us today. This is part one of our message series titled, Understanding Salvation from the Gospel of John, chapter 3 and verse 18. Thank you for being with us today. And don't forget to write. I'm Bishop Ramon Di Maria. I'm the pastor of Abundant Grace Church. Remember that God loves you. Jesus died for you. And we love you also. Go with God, my beloved.